flow doesn't start up again, that could create oil-related problems for Americans. Well, it's undoubtedly will place a hardship on us. Uh, whenever you're selling something that's in short supply and then the supply is even cut shorter, uh, it, it creates a problem. Uh, it could get to the point where you have lines at the service stations. Mr. Schlesinger talked about the possibility of closing stations on Sundays, uh, holidays and evenings. Uh, uh, if it happens, undoubtedly they will. Majority of them close. I don't think they'll all ever close. Uh, you know, the love affair with the American with his automobile is probably the biggest love affair that the world's ever known. However, the no oil situation in Iran could throw a monkey wrench into the machinery of that love affair. America now depends on foreign oil for about 45% of its needs. Only 5% of that figure is Iranian oil. It's a small percentage. However, in these thin oil supply times, that figure carries with it a lot of weight. We're told, and we know from experience, from, from uh, the embargo days, that a 2% swing uh, makes a difference between a glut on the market and, and really lines at the pump. Uh, we run it that close, we the industry, and we have to. Motorists, should the allocations be imposed, will probably have to pay anywhere from 9 to 12 cents more per gallon for gasoline at the pump. Oil companies like Sunmark Industries are cutting back on marketing divisions in anticipation of the lean oil times. It's ironic. April 1st is the proposed deadline for the possible federal allocation program. And April 1st is also the day of the proposed cutback for Sunmark Industries. You do not need a big marketing department and a lot of people and a lot of expertise to sell a product that's short in supply. And petroleum is short. And now with the Iranian problem, it's even shorter. Will Americans learn any lessons should the allocation program be imposed by the federal government? I hope it tells the uh, Department of Energy that we really should start taking steps to uh, become more self-sustaining in this country. I really think that we could if they would reduce some of the government regulations. One thing is certain. America's energy problems and oil shortages will not disappear like a puff of steam vapor into a bright blue sky. For Total Aid Tulsa, Bill Mitchell reporting. Prices on the New York Stock Exchange sank from the opening bell today. The Dow Jones Industrial Average briefly trimmed its losses in mid-afternoon, but then continued to decline. The market closed down about 12 and a half points. Tonight, Bob wants us to meet a retired old man in Bob Howard's Tulsa, whose clock collection is something to behold. For reasons of security, the location of the collection will be withheld, and the collector identified only as Joe. Time is fleeting and elusive. Although we say we can, we really can't buy it, or kill it, or save it. Nothing affects our lives more than time. But all we can really do about its passage is clock it. Fourteen years ago, Joe retired and became more aware of time. And with the time to do it, started collecting clocks. Joe, how many clocks have you saved over the last, what, 14 years? About 150 clocks. So you've got quite a collection. Uh, quite a collection. What got you into that? Well, I was thinking about retirement, and I said, well, something very interesting to do, and so I thought about clocks, how interesting they were. They're pretty important to us, aren't they? They're very important to us. If the, the clocks are, they tell the time we were born, so and they go right through life with us and record the time that we die. They, we get up by them, we go to work by them, and everything. If we stopped all the clocks in the morning, the world would be in a stage of confusion. It really would but, be, wouldn't it? It really would be. Now, you've got clocks here that date back as far as what? Uh, 1735. We've had some problems with that. That's right. I want to say, too, that uh, you meant to call him a retired oil, oil man, man, right? Not an old man. <laughs> I'm sorry, Joe. <laughs> Joe's a real nice guy, and he's not that old. I'll right? call Joe and apologize. Oh, okay. We'll be back right after this. Okay, folks, ready to close on your new home. Down payment? Here you go. Tax escrow deposit. Here you go. And homeowner's insurance. Here you go. We've got the shield. So what'll it be today? Big car, small car? Haven't decided. Two door, four door? Haven't decided. Have you decided on anything? Yes, car insurance. I've got the shield. 
<laughs> For all your personal insurance needs, including life insurance, see your local MFA agent. We've got the shield for you. We just do one thing on Owen Spring Creek Farm. We make country sausage, and we try to make it better than anybody. That's why we use all the choice cuts of pork, the hams, shoulders, and loins, and hand trim the meat so Owen's country sausage is leaner. I don't think you can put a better cooking sausage in your skillet or a better tasting one in front of your family. Owens Country Sausage, fresh off the farm from the Owens family to yours. I'm Jim Durr of Mohawk Steel. In 1972, Mohawk was a subsidiary of a bankrupt corporation. But we had an idea for getting back on our feet. We went to Mercantile Bank and Trust. Mercantile financed our rebuilding and has continued to finance our expansion. Today, we're one of the three top U.S. companies in our field. When you're looking for a way to make your ideas work, get together with Mercantile. We have a way with money. One of the highest honors of a marching band can receive is to win the White Water Wisconsin National Marching Championships. At Union High School in Tulsa, the marching band has vowed to win that competition this year. And as Christopher Lewis reports now, they think they have the winning secret. Their secret? Pride in their band. Sure, it takes a lot of practice and it takes discipline and talent as well, but the one thing that these students say will win them the title this June in Whitewater, Wisconsin, will be pride. Oh, a lot of pride, practice, and a band director that knows how to scream a lot. Everybody working together and working as a team like they said. What makes this the best band, though? Well, we got a lot of pride and we know how to do it. Two main things probably be pride and confidence, and another one is the will to work together with each other and to be able to get up at 7 o'clock in the morning and come out and no matter how cold it is or what the weather is like to be able to get out there and march. Do you think the Union High School Band has that? I think we got it all. And one thing's for sure, in Whitewater, Wisconsin this summer, the Union High School Band is going to win. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> For Total 8 Tulsa, Christopher Lewis reporting. That looks like fun. I'll tell you, those young musicians work as hard as the athletes getting ready to perform. Oh, There's yeah. something else. And the Union High is a super band. What do they do? Basketball, huh? A lot of basketball. The OIU Titans continue that uh, kamikaze schedule of theirs tonight. The Titans are in the nation's capital, Washington, D.C., to take on Georgetown. Just happened to be the team ranked number nine in the entire nation. Titans go into the game with a 10 and 9 record. Meanwhile, at TU, Jim King and the Hurricane are preoccupied with tomorrow night's opponent here, Drake. Well, Drake is a, a pretty good-sized team. They're a physical team, and uh, we've got, of course, Chad Nelson in the middle who uh, matches up with Joe pretty well in size, and uh, they've got uh, one of the best guards in the league with Cricklow, and uh, who is shooting the ball awfully well this year and playing awfully well, and they've got several uh, new faces that we haven't seen that uh, have been doing a good job for them this year, and they're a very explosive team as far as I'm concerned. They can uh, score a lot of points, and if you don't watch it, uh, they can come at you real fast. And right now, they're 13 and four. That's a pretty good record. It's a lot better than ours, so uh, you have to feel like they're they're a better, much better ball club than they were last year. Drake is directly ahead of the Hurricane in the conference standings. The third place Bulldogs head into tomorrow night's 7:30 game with a five and two Valley mark. A full slate of action tonight in the Big 8. It includes Nebraska at Oklahoma State. Nebraska, one of the Big 8 leaders. OU, another Big 8 leader, travels to Ahern Fieldhouse to take on Kansas State. The Sooners have never won at Ahern in Manhattan. If they win tonight, they'll maintain his share of first place in the conference and break that long jinx at Kansas State. Well, a super junior college basketball game last night up in Claremore. Carl Lockie was on hand as Ken Trickey's Claremore College Thunderbirds was stood a late rally by Northeast and Oklahoma A&M Junior College for an exciting 109 to 107 victory. The Thunderbirds were led as they have been all season by forward Reuben Jackson, who hit for 28 points last night. Jackson, however, was one of few players praised by a surprisingly disappointed well, Coach Tricky after the game. Ten minutes when you're up by 18 and 20, and then toward the end there, you hold, you know, you uh, you think you've got it won. That's what they thought. You know, they think that you uh, got seven minutes to go or eight minutes to go, and you're up 18. You're going to win going away, and you don't do that. You show a little more class than that. Cletus Green's Golden Norseman didn't appear to have a prayer early in the second half. Claremore went up by almost 20 points, but AM kept plugging and almost made it all the way back. 
At the start of the second half, our kids uh, fell uh, 12 to 14 points behind, scoring two against their 14 or 16. And from then on, it's catch up. Finally, uh, we just said to the guys, uh, hey, this is the time we find out what you're made of. If you want to try to play hard, well, you can get after it and uh, prove that uh, anything can happen sometime in a game like this. And finally, they began to believe it just a little bit. And what was it? Finally, two points, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The high men for Greens Norseman were George Morrow and Keith Hilliard, and along with Claire Morris Jackson, those three may be some of the most highly sought after junior college basketball talent in Oklahoma this year. Two outstanding junior college programs at Claremore and Miami. The All City High School Diving Championships are underway now at Mason High School. The top 14 boy and girl divers in the state are competing for individual and team honors, with Edison High the favorite in both divisions. And the report on the girls diving, as expected, Edison's Marsha Esty has won it, followed by Bonnie Mosier of Memorial and Leanne McKenna of Mason, the top three girl divers in the city. The city's swimming championships will be held Thursday and Friday evening at the TU Pool. We'll have a taped report on the diving championships tonight at 10. Well, the horses, the calves, the bulls are all gone now from the Tulsa Assembly Center. Once again, it's the home of the Ice Oilers, and they'll open a homestand tonight against Fort Worth. The Oilers are coming off a so-so weekend at Salt Lake City. They skated to a tie one night and got bombed the next. In spite of the fact that we lost 7-1 in the second game, we were really hurting uh, from the standpoint of defensemen being injured and defensemen being sick. And uh, uh, we had to play an overtime game on the, fri on the Friday night, and uh, just caught up to us Saturday. Crucial homestand that's coming up now. Uh, you've got about four straight home games here. This is make it or break it time. Well, there's no question. Uh, we set a goal of 72 points, and uh, we have 18 remaining games at home, and we're going to have to win uh, most of those remaining games in order to make the playoffs. The Ice Oilers have just about overcome their bout with the flu, but Choice admits illness is not as much a problem as the team's failure to capitalize when opportunities present themselves. First game in the first period, we could have jumped way out in front because we had by far and away the best scoring chances in the period, and we came up with nothing. Uh, what this team is going to have to do is put the puck in the net. Well, that usually helps. Anyway, 7.30 tonight, the Tulsa Ice Oilers back in action against Fort Worth. By the way, Ice Oilers President Bobby Gilbert is in the market for some business partners. Since taking over operation of the club, Gilbert has borne the financial burden on his own shoulders. He's now looking for interested parties to uh, help him out with the Tulsa Ice Oilers. Coming up, Roughnecks and Rhythmic Gymnastics, next in sports. nice things about shopping at Sipes, and our low, low prices are the nicest of all. You'll find the highest quality products, specialty items, even a few surprises, all in the nicest surroundings. So start getting your money's worth today. Shop Sipes, where everything's nice, especially the price. Everything's nice at Sipes. A birthday party, yes. It's Premier Pontiac's anniversary celebration, and that means maximum savings on every new Pontiac in stock. For example, you can own a new 79 Grand Prix with factory air conditioning, automatic transmission, power steering, and power brakes, plus tinted glass and radio for just $57.88 delivered. That's right, just $57.88 for a new Grand Prix. Premier Pontiac's anniversary celebration. Don't miss it. Premier Pontiac, where volume makes it happen, just west of Lewis on 11. Hello, sunshine, with your eyes so bright. We're gonna get this done by dinner tonight. With our sleeves rolled up and our Maryland Club. Tastes so fine, we'll have a good time. Maryland Club, my Maryland Club kind of day. Ah, delicious Maryland Club coffee. We pack it while it's still warm. That captures the flavor and locks in the great Maryland Club taste. What better way to smooth out a busy day? Maryland Club, my Maryland Club kind of day. Tulsa Roughneck coach Alan Hedden had his first chance to see his team in game situations this past weekend in Florida. It was also his first chance to get a look at a tryout player from Iran, a World Cup player, Iraj Dinafar, who was making, uh, trying to make the team on a tryout basis. Dinafar, number 11, had one goal and two assists over the weekend, and Coach Hinton was fairly pleased with that effort. You know, he's played in the Iranian uh, World Cup team, which doesn't mean incredible amounts of... Um, uh, ability really, but the lad's a good little player. He's not a big lad at all. He's a he's a tricky player. He's fairly quick, 
He's uh, tenacious. He's uh, he's what I would. He, he, there's no doubt about it. He, he 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 would be a fairly good player in the North American Soccer League. The Roughnecks have signed another first division player, 19-year-old Wayne Hughes, a first division player from England. Well, this Friday and Saturday at Woodland Hills Mall, the first Oil Capital Invitational Modern Rhythmic Gymnastics Meet will be held. Competition runs from 10 to 6 each day. The public invited to watch inside the mall at no charge. Rhythmic Gymnastics is a relatively new form in this area. Patty McCurry of Gymnastic Country USA explained it for us. Okay, what it is, it's uh, really the dancer sport. It's um, mainly, you know, leaps and turns and jumps. They're not allowed to tumble like a normal gymnast would on floor exercise. No aerials or backflips or anything. It really opens up uh, this activity to, to girls other than really strong, hard gymnasts. Yeah, gymnastics is getting so difficult that the really ballet, very slender, frail girls are leaving the sport. And they're getting into modern rhythmic because it is for dancers. And it's a very big meet coming up this weekend for that. Yeah, uh, what we're doing is, what we're doing is bringing the modern rhythmic people to us. It's no, it's mostly in the New York and California area, and there's it's new to this area, so we're bringing them to us and and going to have a nice event. I understand it'll be at Woodland Hills Mall. Can you tell us a little more about the time and where people can see it? Yeah, what we're trying to do is spread out so that it, people can see it all day. It'll be, be Friday and Saturday from 10 to 6, and they'll warm up an hour and compete an hour and warm up an hour and compete an hour. What are some of the activities in this rhythmic type movement? Okay, they work with a ribbon and uh, jump ropes and balls and hoops. Linda Fratiani of Northridge, California has taken the early lead in a bid for her third straight U.S. Women Figure Skating Championships today in the competition in Cincinnati. And in case you haven't heard Muhammad Ali's latest retirement plans, he says now he will make a retirement speech on national television for a reported fee of $2 million. Ali says it may be the greatest retirement scene since Washington bid farewell to his troops. Ali out of the game. Our congratulations to the KTUL Laker basketball team beating the tough group from Alloway, 87-84, on one of the great comebacks in Laker basketball history. Team now two and two. Of course, any win is a comeback for the Lakers. <laughs> Glad they won. <laughs> we'll be back right after this. We at Central Air Distributors would like to better acquaint you with the type of jobs we specialize in. Whirlpool heating and cooling products for the new homes, new systems for older homes, to replace worn equipment for a commercial installation, a complete service department, and we service all brands. April Air humidifiers and Space Guard air cleaners, heat pumps, storm windows, and insulation for the complete job. So get your job complete before prices go up again and avoid the summer rush. Central Air Distributors and Whirlpool. Fly away to the big sale at Clark's Good Clothes. Spread the word. The big news is that we're having a sale. Suit, slack, sport coat, shirt. It's a big, big sale, so pass it along. Spread the word. Hurry. Fly on down to the big sale at Clark's Good Clothes, Tulsa, Joplin, Oklahoma City. By heating certain body signs, you can head off a serious problem. By heating certain brake signs, you might head off a costly or dangerous brake problem. For instance, if your wheels make a squeaking or grinding sound, or the brake pedal is mushy, or your car pulls to the side when the brakes are applied. See the brakeman. We'll inspect your brakes free and do what's needed to make your car safe again. Drive with care and see the brakeman, where we know what we're doing. Total 8 Tulsa is brought to you this evening by Reesers Discount Foods, Central Air Distributors, Clark's Good Clothes, and by the brakeman. At Woodland Hills Mall, as part of the American Heritage theme, a gallery of presents is on display, and we have more on that from John Hassler. There is an adage that there is a story behind every picture, and we have 39 of them here. They are of the American presidents, and indeed, there is a story behind each one of the president's lives. For example, Martin Van Buren. Did you know that he was responsible for establishing the Treasury of the United States? Or Millard Fillmore, the 13th president, was responsible for a $30,000 grant to develop the Morse Telegraph. And Abraham Lincoln, known for honesty and integrity, supposedly said, find out what brand of whiskey General Grant drinks and send a case of it to all my Union generals. Then Grant himself, who, like modern presidents, faced an ever-threatening inflation problem, even in 1875. 
Did you know James Garfield, the 20th president, was assassinated after serving only four months in office? You can learn more about the presidents and their lives at the Gallery of Presidents. Tulsa police are investigating a string of armed robberies believed to be connected, and Phillips Petroleum Company talks about what may have been caused in that natural pipeline explosion near Bay. We'll begin a special series tonight on Crime Stoppers and what Tulsans can do to help fight crime working with the police department. And Don Woods will have the, the weather and Chris Lincoln with the sports. That's next on Total Aid Tulsa. I'm Mike Hendricks, Executive Director of On the Bricks. On the Bricks is an ex-offender agency that assists the convicted felon in attempting to reintegrate themselves successfully back into the community. If you have questions concerning our program, please feel free to contact us at 583-3143 or 524 South Boulder. Thank you for your support. It's another great night at the Channel 8 Studios. Here comes Bob Howard, Totally Tulsa News Anchorman. And Beth Ringel, Totally Tulsa News Co-Anchor. Bears sports director Chris Lincoln, always a hit with the fans. And Don Woods, meteorologist, makes an impression on everything he touches. What a cast! Power, Ringo, Lincoln, and Woods, still the best show in town. Channel 8, number one, and you're part of it. Total 8 Tulsa, with Bob Hauer, Beth Rangel, Chris Lincoln, and Don Woods. The most complete up-to-the-minute news in the Southwest. Good evening. Thank you very much for joining us. Authorities in LaFleur County are searching for three Bacoshi residents who disappeared early Sunday morning. 16-year-old Shelby Jean McFarland, 20-year-old brother Robert, and 17-year-old Johnny Porter were last seen about 4 a.m. Sunday en route from Loving to Bacoshi. An air search is still underway to find the trio. They were driving a 1975 blue Chevy pickup with a light blue camper on the back. We have a Total 8 film crew in LaFleur County. We'll have a complete report on that search on our news at 10. A Tulsa woman was robbed early this morning as she was leaving her apartment complex, and it appears that this is just one of many such crimes committed recently. We have two reports, first from Dan Murphy on today's robbery. It started out as a routine day for Margie Elsie. She had just returned from a trip to London and was preparing to go back to her job. But when she left her apartment this morning, the pleasant thoughts of her trip were quickly erased. I was on my way to work, and this man stopped me with a gun and asked me for my purse, and I gave it to him. How much money did you lose? About $300. Did he apply any force at all, or the gun was all he needed? The gun was all I needed. Police say this is only one in a series of such crimes, and it is believed that only one person is responsible for many of these incidents. Diane Kennedy has further details. This is Diane Kennedy reporting. Today's robbery makes the 17th armed robbery reported to police in the past 48 hours. Sergeant Larry Johnson says the suspect in the robbery has held up several women in the past few days. We have a, a series of armed robberies being committed by a white male individual uh, described between 17 and 23 years old, about 5'9", uh, medium thin bill, who's been accosting ladies uh, down in an area between south of 51st Street and uh, about clear down to 71st Street from about Riverside Drive to Harvard in that area. These ladies are coming out or going to their apartments and he's uh, uh, approaching them on the parking lot, pulling a small revolver and uh, taking their purse and contents. Police are also investigating a series of convenience store robberies. Five stores were held up in only two hours early this morning. The stores were scattered around the city, but police believe all the robberies were committed by the same people. Police received three different descriptions of the robber, and they believe there are three people working together, two black males and a female. The bandits were armed with a sawed-off shotgun, a rifle, and a 45 automatic. At the last robbery around 4 this morning, a police officer saw the getaway car pulling away from a Utotem store. He started chasing it but lost it at Garrison and Apache. A short time later, the car was found abandoned and somewhat damaged at Frankfurt and Xanthus. Inside, police found empty watch boxes taken from the Utotem and an almost empty cash box. The car had been reported stolen yesterday. Police say the trio may be responsible for several other armed robberies. For Total A Tulsa, Diane Kennedy reporting. 
Two convicts charged with the rape and attempted murder of two Ada women in Muskogee in late December were back in court this morning. Leonard Austin and Thomas Green had been paroled from Muskogee's pre-release center less than two months before the alleged assaults. Authorities believe they beat both women, raped one of them, and tied them with ropes and blankets. The women freed themselves and escaped near Shakota. Green and Austin will face charges in, of first-degree rape, kidnapping, and conspiracy in March. That 35-year-old woman who was raped, shot, and thrown over a cliff earlier this week in Tahlequah has given police a description of her attacker. Officers say they expect to have a composite sketch of the suspect soon. Coming up, Phillips Petroleum Company gives its own version of what caused a deadly gas explosion near Beggs. I'm Bill Mitchell. Crime Stoppers, who are they? Here in Albuquerque, they're anyone who has information about unsolved felonies. The program has had a dramatic effect on Albuquerque. It will start soon in Tulsa. We'll tell you all about it on Total A Tulsa News. And the Tulsa Philharmonic is being fined by the Occupational Safety and Health Administration. I'm Christopher Lewis. Total 8 Tulsa is brought to you this evening by your friendly Otasco Home and Auto Stores, Leasers Discount Foods, the First National Bank of Fayetteville, Evans Furniture Revolution, and by Safeway. For over 30 years, people have been buying Poland chainsaws. Would you use anything but a Poland? Poland, Ed. Poland. And for over 30 years, they've been mispronouncing our name. Poland. Po a poo. A poo. So we'd like to remind you that when you want a tough, dependable chainsaw, there's only one name you need to remember. Poland. Get your Poland, a uh, Poland chainsaw from Otasco. Hi, I'm I'm Larry, and and I I work for for Research Discount, Research Discount Foods, and and come on. Larry. And my boss is a real nice guy, and we've got. You remember six doors. Six, we've got, we've got. Come on, six. Six. We've got six doors. Don't be nervous. Go ahead. And Reesers is where you ought to be shopping to. Is that all I needed? This is Northwest Arkansas. They call it the land of opportunity. At First National Bank in Fayetteville, we're helping build a stronger Northwest Arkansas as we begin our 75th year of service to our friends and neighbors. You'll like the way we do banking at First National Bank of Fayetteville. We built this land together. We'll be proud to pass it on through our hills and through Member our FDIC. Laboratory testing has shown that the gas pipeline which exploded near Beggs, killing two people, was sabotaged. Today, the Phillips Petroleum Company announced the establishment of a reward to find the persons responsible for intentionally damaging the pipeline, and Bill Mitchell has more on the story. The pipeline exploded on October 30th of last year. Seeping fumes from a six-inch natural gas pipeline exploded when a truck was driven into the area. Two Beggs women in the truck were killed instantly in that explosion and flash fire. Today at a press conference, Phillips Petroleum Company officials showed pictures of the intentionally damaged pipeline and announced the establishment of a $50,000 reward to find the person or persons who cut the pipe. They called the cut in the 1 8 thick inch pipe an intentionally induced gouge. The torch cut penetrated more than 80% of the pipe wall at its deepest point. The cut wasn't found in pipeline testing, because it is believed to have been masked over by some kind of tape. It is speculated the pipe was tampered with before it was buried five and one half feet below ground back in 1976. Phillips Company officials theorized someone was trying to embarrass their company or the construction company who put the pipe in. It is believed that whoever cut the pipe did not do so in order for it to rupture in 1978 and kill two people. Well, yes, I, I can say I don't think they did that because uh, this would, uh, this job to cut through 80 percent of the thickness of the pipe without going through it to cause a leak immediately would really take uh, uh, well like a surgeon it just is that sensitive anyone with information about the sabotaging of the pipe can contact the phillips petroleum company in bartlesville the okmulgee county sheriff's office or the oklahoma state bureau of investigation officials promise all information will be kept confidential 
For Total Aid Tulsa, Bill Mitchell reporting. A $5,000 reward is being offered for information leading to the arrest and conviction of the people responsible for a November fire. Diane Kennedy has details. The $5,000 reward offer stems from a November 25th fire at the Mid-Continent Thermo King Company, a sales and service outlet for truck refrigeration equipment. The blaze apparently was set by burglars trying to cover their tracks. The burglars broke in through a back door, stole about $20,000 worth of parts, and then poured a flammable liquid through what used to be the parts room. Today, it's just an open area. The fire created such intense heat that it warped a steel fire door and steel beams on the ceiling. The roof was destroyed and had to be replaced. Thousands of dollars worth of equipment was also damaged. The company estimates the loss to be around $250,000. The remodeling is still not finished. Anyone wanting to furnish information concerning the fire should call the fire marshal's office at 581-5241. All information will be kept confidential. For Total A Tulsa, Diane Kennedy reporting. And in another fire today, two residents of a northeast Oklahoma City, Oklahoma City home escaped injury this morning when a fire swept through their home. The blaze caused more than $60,000 damage to the residents, as Bruce Kriegees reports. When firemen arrived at the John Searle residence, the house was burning out of control. Mr. Searle and his son Danny had been sleeping in bed, but awoke at the sound of a smoke detector and got out of the home safely. <laughs> Mrs. Searle arrived home moments later, and the frantic search began for animals still inside the house. Lisa! Lisa! I got a fire in here. Can you get it out in here? It's right in there in the hall. Here. Get in the hall. Here. It's right in there. Here. Let me get in. I'll point no, it No, you stay out. Go around there where you belong. As the fire burned out of control, firefighters stayed inside, searching for the animals. At least one dog was rescued in time. That's I don't know how he is here. There's another one in there? Yeah. Fancy shepherd. It's a great big shepherd. She's fixing to have puppies. Okay, go to the left side and get the woman's clothes, please. Hey. Oh, I'm never going get them. Get them. Okay. There's the coat in there. I'd like to have a fur coat. What's the matter here? Here, ma'am. Here, ma'am. Okay. What do you have? Anything. Get out. Get out. We can't get nothing. Come on. Get out. Get out. Get It took only 30 minutes for the fire to spread to the rest of the house due to a lack of water. The nearest fire hydrant was a quarter mile away. Once the available water ran out, the home was left to burn. There was nothing else the firemen or the spears could do. Next, the County Commission receives an opinion poll on a new driller park. Right after this. Happy Endings, brought to you by Jell-O brand gelatin. Cheesecake. You said you were being a sales manager. He home. always says no to dessert. He says dessert fills you up and slows you down. Well, he won't say no to Jell-O gelatin. It looks good. You sure it isn't filling? Positive. Fabulous dessert. Thank you. Light yet so delicious. I see how you keep on your toes, Turner. <laughs> Sweetheart, you're the best. So for happy endings, don't say no, say Jell-O gelatin. You've always wanted a Maytag. And now, with this certificate, you get a $25 cash refund from Maytag when you buy this energy-efficient A308 washer. It can help cut your water bill because it uses less total water than any other top-loading washer with like capacity. Like all Maytags, it's built to be dependable. Buy now and save $25. Here's how. Now at Melton's Appliance Company, get this $25 Maytag cash refund certificate. If you're a part of the community being served by Claremore College, why not join hands with the Claremore College Foundation and become a part of a bright future? The foundation is presently involved in Quest for Quality 79, a program designed to hone the edge at Claremore College a program leading to a three-way bond between the college, the foundation, and you. 
Yes, you'll be able to see and feel the results of your contributions when you decide to make Claremore College the college of your choice for support. A $3 million bond issue for a new all-purpose stadium at the Tulsa Fairgrounds was proposed today by County Commissioner Lewis Harris. Harris said the Fairground Trust Authority has paid for an $8,000 survey of the community to determine voter sentiment on the bond issue. Results of that survey will be available in two weeks, and if favorable, Lewis expects a proposal to build an 8 to 12,000 seat stadium to go to the voters in May. Passage of such a bond issue will require 60% majority of the votes cast. Well, what's on Spotlight tonight, Chris? Well, Thursday's usually our day to check in on the fishing. <laughs> hey, Don Butler uh, put it pretty clean. See, you have to be a little off-center to be out there fishing in this weather, unless you find a heated dock. But, uh, but he yeah, was. Uh, yeah, Don was out fishing, <laughs> so we'll have a report with Don and uh, a few features uh, anglers ought to know about coming up. All right. Oh, oh, I'm ready to go right now. <laughs> Thursday's our day to Spotlight and check in on the fishing editions in green country. We had to ask our fishing pro, Don Butler, if he had any cure for cabin fever. That's now reaching epidemic proportions here in green country. Well, fishing fever and cabin fever are synonymous, and the only thing that will cure either of them right now is fishing. Uh, you can get some relief by talking fishing, and that's what we intend to do at the uh, tackle show starting the 15th through the 18th. We've got a, uh, an all-star lineup of fishing pros that will come in. I think we've we probably uh, uh, lent it more this year towards instructional uh, than we have just sitting and listening to somebody else have to tell about how many fish they catch. So we've got a lot of instruction and be a lot to be learned there. The only fishing that we have in the area right now is just heated docks. I haven't even talked to any of the guys who have fished below the lock and dams for walleye. I feel like probably there's, there's some fishing going on there, but the cold's just been so bitter anybody would have been uh, a little bit uh, off level to have gone out and tried it. So. The docks are about the same right now. Lee Henry says that he doesn't have many people in his docks and they're not catching too many fish. I, of course, that always happens when you don't have many fish, then there, of course there's not many fish being caught, but uh, it won't be long now that we'll have everybody trying it. Down the Bass Unlimited Dinner is something people ought to put on their calendar. March the 13th, and we're, we've got a good worthwhile project this year for, uh, where the money will be spent. We're gonna extend the uh, link limit studies that we had last year, so we'd like to invite everybody out for that time period. And we always have a good time, so remember March the 13th. The Hurricane has a big Valley game with Drake here tonight. We'll see highlights of some big basketball victories last night for ORU and OSU. Rhythmatic gymnast Holly Eidelman shows off her talents of this beautiful sport. John Cobb displays his expensive toys that men go racing with. These stories, along with our weekly snow ski report, a slow motion look at the city's outstanding diving champion coming up. All that in sports. Beth? Thank you. A call for women to continue their efforts in business and politics was the topic of a seminar today, and George Stewart was there and has this report. It's called... Well, over 300 women gathered here today in a seminar to discuss the changing roles of women. And if there was any common theme that seemed to be developed, perhaps it would be, we've come a long way, baby, but don't stop now. A distinguished panel of women shared their insights into everything from banking and continuing education to crime prevention and women as travelers. Norma Eagleton appeared as her job as Revenue and Finance Commissioner ends and her new job as a State Corporation Commissioner begins. Also present was Mrs. Molly Boren. It was her first trip back to Oklahoma since her husband was sworn in as a United States Senator, and she was glad to be back. It feels very good indeed. As a matter of fact, if there hadn't been snow on the ground yesterday, when I stepped off the plane, I would have stooped down and kissed the ground. <laughs> Mrs. Boren is a lawyer and former judge, and she has something to say about being the spouse of an elected official. I also did a little bit of research in the Library of Congress about the, uh, the very strict protocol that was once required of congressional and senate wives. And I, I found it very interesting. I thought the audience might find it interesting as well. There's been quite a change over the last 20 to 30 years in that regard. Are uh, Washington women in that sense then more, uh, what would the word be, liberated now in terms of uh, well, protocol? Well, in, in that, oh yes, oh yes indeed. And also, you find more working wives among the senators and, and congressmen. There are several lawyers, there are women involved in real estate businesses. And I think in that regard, it's, it's changed a great deal, too. About her own career in law, Mrs. Boren says she might practice while in Washington, but not immediately. For Total Aid Tulsa, George Stewart reporting. Next, we'll have a special report. On Tulsans fighting crime with the police right after this. Thank you, 
Tommy? Join the team to help Wendy's Old Fashioned Hamburgers raise money for Easter Seals. Stop by at any Wendy's and pick up an entry form entitling you to half-price bowling. For every pin that you knock down, money will go to your local Easter Seal chapter. And you can win great prizes, too. For details, stop by Wendy's today. Let's all bowl for Easter Seals! Darling, I love you so. Pickwick Records gives you the sounds of yesterday, today and tomorrow. Featuring such major artists as Elvis Presley, Dolly Parton, Stevie Wonder, Linda Ronstadt, and Bing Crosby. Plus the music from the fantastic movie, Reese. You can buy these selections and many, many more at the incredibly low price of $2.69. Look for this special display at your nearby Safeway stores. The difference is that you help yourself to flavor with half the fat. Kraft announces light and lively processed cheese product in slices and a loaf. Help yourself. Half the fat of regular American processed cheese and lower calories for all your favorite recipes. Try light and lively. The difference is that you help yourself to flavor with half the fat. And America spells cheese. A pickup truck train collision just north of Wolitka today has left one person dead. With that story, John Hassler. The accident occurred at 11.55 this morning at a railroad crossing three miles north of Wolitka on a country road. According to an Oklahoma highway patrolman, a farmer, apparently out feeding cattle, decided not to stop at the crossing because of snow and ice on the road. The engineer of the Missouri-Kansas-Texas train said the locomotive was traveling approximately 40 miles per hour when the pickup attempted to cross the tracks. The truck was dragged for almost 500 feet before the train could stop. No one on the train was injured. Damage to the engine was estimated at $2,000. The name of the victim is being withheld pending notification of relatives. For Total 8 Tulsa, north of Wilika, John Hassler reporting. Former Tulsa Police and Fire Commissioner Mike Kirpan, who earlier this... The Vietnam South Tulsa will be closing its doors in June. Financial problems are the cause of that closure, as Christopher Lewis reports. For the past 50 years, the Vianney School for Girls has stood as a landmark here in South Tulsa, but come June, it will be closed. Federal regulations, if the school were to remain open, would be too restrictive to make the school pay for itself. Basically, we're closing the school because we do not have enough sisters to cover all of our programs across the United States, and we do have to feel which are the most effective, where we can do the most good. And in Tulsa at the present time, our numbers are low. We don't see in the future that they will increase, and part of the problem is the uh, LEAA guidelines and the future of possibly Oklahoma taking on the funds that uh, would put these guidelines into effect here. When do you think that the school will close? Uh, it will phase out at the end of May and will probably leave by June. What happens? Where do you go? And then what happens to this beautiful building? Well, we will just go to one of the ten cities that we do serve, one of the ten major cities, and the buildings here, we are negotiating with the diocese regarding them. What about the girls? Twenty girls here, their futures are at stake. Where do they go? Well, we have geared their programs, each one of them, so we feel that for most of them, they will be ready to either return to their families or to whatever program they, we had lined up for them by the end of May. For any that will not be ready or do not feel that they want to uh, go back home at that time, we have other alternative plans. So they won't suffer from the same? Well, they're suffering inside because they will miss us. And we, we are more than just a placement. We, we are a relationship that lasts through many years. You're going to be sorry to see this go? Yes, very, very. So by June, the Vianney School for Girls will be one for the history books. For Total 8 Tulsa, Christopher Lewis reporting. A fire left an Oakhurst family homeless. The fire began last night and reignited early in the morning. When a Total 8 Tulsa film crew answered a fire alarm in North Tulsa today, they got more than they bargained for. What started out as a routine floor furnace fire in a home turned into a first-rate rescue. Christopher Lewis has the story. It was early afternoon when Tulsa fire units responded to a house blaze in the 2600 block of East Oklahoma in North Tulsa. A small wood frame home was burning. Firemen said a malfunctioning floor furnace was to blame. A routine assignment for city firemen, routine especially at this time of year. Fortunately, there was nobody at home when the blaze broke out. Nobody except three family pets, two cats and a small dog. 
When firemen finally noticed that the animals were trapped inside the burning home, a routine assignment turned into a rescue. Well, of course, normally we're, we've sent fellows in there with, with masks on. They're looking for people, and uh, they found both these animals there in the kitchen. So I just pumped them a little bit, and there was nothing we could do for the cat. So you just of course, there was no one in there. We knew that before we started to work on them. You, you just hope that the dog will pull through now, and he'll be all, he doesn't look like he was burned at all. He's no, uh, he was just overcome by, by smoke. It was pretty thick. And it's uh, kind of sad to see him struggling like this, but he, there is a chance that he'll make it. Huh? Seems to be, yeah. See, he's, he can touch, touch his eyes and he blinks, so he's yeah, got good he's reaction. Uh -huh. so, what can people do? Keep their dogs and cats from it's not, not too much. Not much when they're when they're shut up in the house like that, you know. To help a bit, firemen brought in oxygen. The dog's heart had stopped beating because he couldn't get air inside the home. But once he was outside, he started regaining consciousness. By the time firemen were packing up, the nameless puppy was regaining more strength on his way back to recovery thanks to the quick thinking of a Tulsa fire chief who really cared. For Total 8 Tulsa, Christopher Lewis reporting. I'm happy to report that dog is doing fine, his tail is still wagging. Well, today was Norma Eagleton's last day. Well, today's Groundhog Day. Much has been said about that little weather forecasting creature, but perhaps nothing quite so poetic as this by reporter Christopher Lewis and photographer Paul Reyes. <laughs> to the lonely groundhog, nature's little weatherman. He makes but one forecast a year on that we can depend. By looking for his shadow early in the day, he judges the length of our winter, how long the bad weather will stay. But can his predictions be trusted, or is it just a myth? How does he know if winter will be here? Some say it's just a wish. In a way, yes, uh, Chris. Uh, theory has it that uh, February is just about the beginning of their mating season. So whenever they come out of their home, maybe they're looking for a mate. So if they see the shadow, what does that mean? Maybe they think they've seen a mate? Probably. Now, if this here groundhog legend is true, and uh, Jill here looks up and doesn't see her shadow, that means that we're going to have a short winter. Well, today there was no shadow, and uh, Jill says that we have no winter here. Jill, come on back, Jill. Hey, Jill, come on, come on. For Total Aid Tulsa, Christopher Lewis and Jill reporting. Good little groundhog. Actually, it's a prairie dog, but nobody knows the difference. You may get some calls. Huh. Groundhogs do. Yeah. No, I guess they're, <laughs> how about the weather, Don? Well, uh, they're just as bad in Oklahoma City. They used a grizzly bear. <laughs> I know they do. <laughs> well, it looks like it's gonna be a weekend without snow, and it's about time. We do have cold weather moving in, but that's going to be about the extent of it. There is cloudiness on the satellite picture front to the west. Uh, on this picture has all... The rest range from foggy to partly cloudy. According to Ben Barker of the National Weather Service at Tulsa's International Airport, if you are one of a handful of people who really love January's record-setting winter weather, then you'll probably love the weather in February. It could be that way. I'm sorry to say that, Bill, but that, that could be true. What are we expecting? The extended forecast right now for the month of February calls for below normal temperatures and above normal precipitation. And when you add those two together in the wintertime, it means a wet, snowy month probably with cool temperatures. Despite those expert predictions, many people are still looking forward to Groundhog Day for the final word on more winter. If the groundhog sees his shadow, we, according to legend, should get six more weeks of winter. If he does not, spring is just around the corner. Many Telsons who have repeated the phrase, I hate snow, are hoping tomorrow will be a cloudy day. For Total Aid Tulsa, Bill Mitchell reporting. Well, along with that record, Oklahoma Natural Gas Company customers set a record for usage of natural gas in January using an estimated 45.3 billion cubic feet of gas. The previous record was 42.1 billion cubic feet of, of gas in January of 1978. 
Don, what do you think about that? Are our bills going to be as high this month as last month? That's a real guess. <laughs> <laughs> also, we will have sunshine tomorrow. I hate to say it, but we're going to... Don't hate to say it. Well, Sounds that good. means six more weeks of winter, though, because oh, oh, that's okay. when we interview Grundoon the Groundhog. That's right. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. February's forecast to be cold and wet, and Grundoon's going to see shadow. Anyway... Uh, we've had a very severe January, but of course, if you like picture postcards, it's been a beautiful January. Here's uh, some beautiful snow scenes around the city of Tulsa, and uh, sometime next July, we'll look back on this and say, wasn't it beautiful after we'd forgotten about slipping around all month? Here's a high-pressure cell. Uh, last uh, uh, 7 o'clock this morning, since that time, the uh, high has moved eastward into Tennessee, and the winds have continued to pump warm air in from the south into Oklahoma. There you can see a front west of us. It's still out there, and it's moving in this direction. But in the meantime, we're getting much warmer weather into the state, and it's about time, because last night we dropped to seven below zero and broke a record here in Tulsa, and that was nothing. Topeka, Kansas would have loved seven below. They got to 23 below zero and broke a century record a 100-year record at Topeka with their 23 below zero. The low pressure center that began in California has moved to northeastern Colorado, but that low caused a lot of trouble out in California when it was there. They, uh, 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 it was right down in the Palm Springs area in the mountains of California, and here Royal Kennedy is reporting on a tremendous snow that is very unusual. By yesterday morning, the mountain areas northeast of the city had up to two feet making roads impassable. Hundreds of motorists and truck drivers had to abandon their vehicles on Interstate 5, the main route between Northern and Southern California. The few snow plows available attempted to clear the highways, but the going was slow. Just like Oklahoma, boy. Southern California, that's very, very unusual for them. The low has now moved to northeastern Colorado, and heavy snow warnings out are, are out from northern Colorado through the Rocky Mountains down into northern New Mexico. Seven inches of snow has already fallen in southern Colorado, and uh, we get reports from the skiers that if you're going skiing, take warm gear. It is bitterly cold out there. You need a face mask. The temperatures are so very cold that it's uh, uh, uncomfortable skiing and normal ski uh, equipment. Uh, take a face mask and really bundle up if you're going out. We have double fronts moving across. This front is moving across from the west and Arctic air coming down from the north. Extremely cold weather is going to move back into Oklahoma. On Sunday, temperatures dropping into the teens for a high pressure or high temperature. And we do expect some flurries in Oklahoma, but not heavy snow. We're grateful for that. In the state of Oklahoma, temperatures are much better today. 37 at Ardmore is the warmest, 34 at uh, McAllister, 31 at Muskogee, Fort Smith, and Fayetteville, 29 Joplin, 30, 23 at Chinook, 29 at Bartlesville and Tulsa, 35 at Oklahoma City, and 29 at Ponca City. The high in Tulsa, 29. The present temperature after an early morning low of an unbelievable 7 below zero. That's cold. Air pollution index, 51. The pollen count, 2. The flying weather in the morning, VFR. So it looks uh, like we're going to have sunshine in the morning. A look at the radar now shows nothing on the radar. We don't expect anything either for a while. Kimmy Pitts of Claremore gets tonight's Gusty, and Gusty is uh, uh, trying to thaw out the thermometer. He says this is just too much, so here he is with a match, and you can see that he's holding it under the thermometer. The mercury's way down there, and it's so cold, he's having to hold a match under the thermometer to drive the temperature up. It's just a little bit too much. Anyway, right now it is clear. The temperature up to 29, the humidity 55%, the wind south 12, the pressure 3011 and steady. And we've had no precipitation today or this month. And normal is 172 for the month of February. Sunrise 724, sunset at 551. Don't forget, tomorrow's Groundhog Day. Partly cloudy, not as cold tonight. Southeast winds 8 to 16, 16 for low. Tomorrow, partly cloudy, just a chance of flurries. Northeast winds 8 to 18, 35. Cooler air is beginning to drain in. Friday night, still a chance of flurries, 16 degrees. And then Saturday, a chance of flurries and 22 degrees. Sunday, colder with snow possible. If we're going to get any kind of snow at all, it'll be on Sunday. And we're not really sure about Sunday because we don't know what that uh, low pressure center is going to do right now. 16 degrees for a high on Sunday. Monday, bitterly cold again. Partly sunny and cold, 16 degrees for a high. 
That's very, very cold weather. So let's have a look at the weather wisdom and uh, see what the moon has to say. Yeah, you're going to be able to see the moon because it's clear. And there is a poem uh, that tells about the moon. Pale moon doth rain, red moon doth blow, white, rain, white moon doth neither rain nor snow. And that's uh, partially true because a pale moon means clouds are over the moon, a red me moon means wind and dust in the air, and a white moon means it's clear and calm and nice weather. It doth? It does. <laughs> it does. This goes way back to early Elizabeth. Very early. Oh, great. Next in Oklahoma delegation goes to Washington. To see President Carter, so stay with us.